All right, man. Well, I'm excited to talk to you about your latest film, Screwdriver, which had its world premiere, Dances with Films, in Hollywood. Before we get into that, though, here at Bionic Buzz, we're all about people's passions. I want to know where your passion to be a filmmaker kind of came from. A certain movie, TV show inspired, there was just something that was natural for you as a child. Sure. I, I think that I have been trying to put together stories in various forms my whole life. I mean, I... I, when I had a Lego and a camcorder and I was, you know, running around elementary school, I'm going to try and get some stop motion out of that. So it's, it's probably inherent on some level or at least pretty deeply coded. That said, there were definitely movies, I think, for me at certain points developmentally where you watch it and something is just working so well that you go, man. If I could make a movie half that good, like I'd be proud of myself. You know, I'd say that's enough. I think um, the thing for me, uh, John Carpenter, is definitely one of those. And uh, I remember feeling that way as a kid about Chinatown as well, specifically the script. Yeah, very cool. Uh, well, let's get into the story of Screwdriver. I mean, what what, what can you say about about giving away too much of the you know the thrills and <laughs> twists and turns sure. in the movie? Uh, Screwdriver is, we call it a gothic psychological thriller, neo-gothic. It is set in the present day in Los Angeles, but it's this very sort of, you know, secret rooms and big house and questionable sanity of a young woman who's a guest. So definitely calling back to like some of those classic gothic themes. It's about a woman who is divorced, who leaves Nebraska and goes back home to uh, her home of California to stay with an old friend and his wife and s starts to enter this very precarious state where she's not sure what's real, not sure, you know, if their intentions are pure or what exactly is going on here and has to kind of piece it together before she fully loses her grip. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, my favorite part of the trailer was definitely what he's like describing being in the mausoleum with the cat. Is that inspired by a certain aspect or some real some real life or anything that came to you? <laughs> uh, so yeah, there are these games that they play. The, the character of Robert, who's who's her, her host, plays with Emily. And I'm, I mean, I'm very much a, a player of games. I love games of all kinds, you know, tabletop games, things like that. And we think of games as this very discrete category. You know, you have games and theater and, you know, religion or culture, but you look at like a, a graduation ceremony or a religious confession or anything like that, and there are these elements of both games and theater that persist through all of them. And one thing we wanted to get into with this movie is like, how can you use those pieces in like a surprising way to, get somebody into the state that you want them in so i think that's what we were going for i dig it i love it yeah. so how was the uh the, the world premiere man i danced it with films i mean oh, that must have been, you know oh, you all this journey putting it together you know you finally got to have it people see it you know yeah the weird thing about premiering a movie is that for you it's so many years usually after the story came into being and for everybody else for the most part, it's their first time. Even our actors who, you know, were there with me uh, making the story every day on set were surprised in certain ways to, to see how it came out. Um, so it was a real treat. It was great to have a packed audience, to have so many strangers who bought tickets, you know, not because they know and love me, although I appreciate those people so much, but really just because they were at the festival or they were interested in cinema and they wanted to come out. Hopefully that means something's working and that that reception can carry on through other festivals and uh, wherever we, we show. Yeah, uh, I was speaking of, is there anything in the works now you're allowed to talk about where it's gonna be screening next or for those who missed it, you know? I want to say but i will need to check what i can okay. say uh, right. i will say uh ascariproductions.com slash screwdriver we will be keeping that updated with future screening social media i'm on instagram um but we have a couple more festivals where we're kind of making it up in the rounds and at a certain point we know and then once we know soon after that we'll be allowed to say gotcha. and obviously the dream is you know some kind of distribution theatrical or streaming and we're talking 
to a few different people about that as well. So we'll see what pans out. Very cool. Uh, you mentioned the website already. Uh, what about social media for you personal also besides the film? Yeah, um, I'm most active on Instagram. Cairo Smith, my name is my handle. And you can participate in all my silly polls that I ask about, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll see a billboard and be like, you know, what do you guys think of this? Is this effective? You know, so I really appreciate I the, like, that. That's the cool. 500 people that, that react to my Instagram polls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll have to join on the fun on that. <laughs> well, cool, man. Anything else in the works you're allowed to talk about? Doesn't have to be uh, this one, you know, screwdriver. Anything else before I let you go? Yeah, um, it's funny. I feel like very much in this industry, you know, there's a groove, whether it's an actor or a writer or director, mm -hmm. that people sort of want to put you in, partially just because it's like easier mentally. Yeah. But it's funny to be thought of as like a psychological thriller guy, because most of the work I do is not exactly in that vein. I, I uh, have a comedy that I wrote, kind of a screwball comedy about the making of the first Star Wars, which is like a big, like me and my dad are both like, mega star wars fan so it's oh, you know, me too, man. A, like a disaster artisty type thing you know george lucas trying to get his movie done and everything's going wrong and um we are talking with a production company about getting that into production so that would be very exciting if we could pull it off oh dude i, I can't show you but i got a at at tattoo on my leg man so a huge star wars fan so nice. yeah, that'd be cool i like nice. that idea a lot i could see that like when they did the, the original uh, trench run what they had they run the car down the bottom uh -huh. i could see something like that like just like, the car actually like, crashes into the set and they spent <laughs> long building or something like that you know? there's so much that went wrong we don't even have to make things up i mean they yeah. were racing time every step of the way and yeah i think you'd you know you you got to work indoors which was like 90 degrees and if you screwed up indoors they send you out to work on the trench which was like you know 120 degrees <laughs> <laughs> You know. Oh, or even uh, the stormtrooper hitting his head. <laughs> the door. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh uh, man, I I really hope that comes. I would love to see that. So, well, cool, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, and we'll talk down the road for future projects. All right. Yeah. No, I appreciate it, and uh, thanks. Thanks for having me on.